Welcome to LVCIL's Independent Living Skills Bite Size Edition. Doing an audio podcast is a new idea, so if you enjoy it, let us know. I'm Catherine, and today we're talking about self care with LVCIL intern Stephanie. Since the pandemic, it seems that we hear the word self care everywhere. You're not wrong. According to Google Trends, the number of searches for self care has more than doubled since 2015. I know I saw it, felt it, and I'm sure many of you saw and felt it. The pandemic created an epidemic of anxiety and depression. So what is the answer? Please welcome Stephanie to our inaugural episode. She's here to provide her expertise on the topic of self-care and how to make it accessible to the wider population. Stephanie is a human services program student at Lehigh Carbon Community College, who happens to be wrapping up her internship with us today. Hi, Stephanie. Thanks for joining us and congratulations on successfully finishing your internship. Hi, Catherine. Thanks for having me here today. So we mentioned that you're an intern. Much of your work was in our core and housing department. How was that experience for you? It was such a great experience. I thoroughly enjoyed my time here at LVCIL. I feel like I was really able to get um, a taste of what it's like to work in the field. I worked under the direction of Debbie Rosier, um, who has a wealth of knowledge in the area. And I was able to do intakes, assist individuals with filling out housing applications, co-lead peer support, and and some other things, um, able to assist with other needs as well. And I feel like I really learned a lot, and I fully enjoyed my time here at LBCIL. I think anybody who's been at the still over the last 20 years knows Debbie and loves to work with her. So she's a great person. I'm glad you got to spend time with her. So what attracted you to the human services field as a career? Well, I've always worked with people in some capacity. Even my first job as a teenager, I worked as a CNA in a nursing home. And I just really enjoy helping others. Uh, When I returned to school later in life, I knew that working in the human services field would be rewarding, not just a paycheck. And I really enjoy seeing other people succeed in life, overcoming barriers that may be in their way. And being a part of that is, it's important and also very rewarding work. So did you always want to be in the human service field or did you have some other career path? No, actually years ago, I wanted to be a nurse. And uh, physically, well, firstly, I, I was always taking care of my family and wasn't able to return to finish my college education. But then as I've gotten older, you know, my physical abilities aren't at the point where, you know, nursing's very physically demanding and you would have to be on your feet eight to 12 hours a day at least. And I knew that was something that wouldn't be viable for me. Um, however, I always knew I wanted to work with people and working in the human services field, I feel like is a natural extension of who who I am as a person and decided to pursue this line of work. So what was your favorite part about your time at LVCIL? The the thing that impressed me the most, I would have to say here, is the culture of this organization. From day one, I just feel like I was greeted warmly. I felt supported, included, and this carries through also to the work that's done here as well. You know, I was just very proud to be a part of an organization that does such meaningful work with people with disabilities and does so in a way that like values and, and respects you know, each individual. Yeah, I agree with you. The culture here is great. We're almost like a family. Yeah. You know, you get to know each other in your department. And, you know, I know my supervisors know about my personal life and ask me about all the things going on. Absolutely. So who has been your most important professional mentor? I would have to say Debbie Rosier. (laughs) Again, she is, she's the real deal. Um, She's incredibly knowledgeable about this field, but she also has this way of being that is both, I don't know how to explain it, supportive and tough. She's, she's very honest. And she doesn't always tell people what they want to hear, but she tells them what they need to hear in a kind and supportive way. And um, I just feel like I've learned so much from her and I aspire to be as impactful and effective as she is in the future, hopefully, when I get to working in the field. (laughs) I think we all want to be a little bit like Debbie. Yeah. (laughs) 
So any advice for someone who's looking to get into the human services field or who's currently in the uh, field? I'm trying to think. So someone going into the field, I would say, don't do it for money because <laughs> you're not going to make a lot of money in this field. But if you're looking to make a positive change in the world and you enjoy working with people, I would say go for it because this field is intrinsically rewarding. It's not just about a paycheck. It's the rewards that you get every day um, working with people. Someone who's currently in the field, I would say to make sure that you use your self-care plan daily. Um, while this field is very rewarding, it can also be super draining. So make sure that you fill your own cup so that you can continue to help others fill their cup as well. That's great advice, I think, for anybody. Um, so you talked about self-care. So there are a lot of definitions thrown out at times, maybe self-created definitions or images mm -hmm. of self-care. So how would you define it in relation to the work that you do or have done? So self-care is simply taking an active role in protecting your own well-being and happiness. Um, we can take active steps on a daily basis to create a balance in our lives when we're feeling stressed out. Um, this is something that can help us build our resilience and guard us against, you know, the negative effects that, that chronic stress can have on us. I love that idea of an active step. It's, you know, you have to be a participant and it doesn't just happen to you. Yeah, absolutely. So I know it's going to be nearly impossible to hit all the examples that mm -hmm. encompass self-care, but can you give us some examples of self-care practices that maybe are a little less known? Um, well, I would say that self-care doesn't always have to be a huge, profound step. It can be little things that you do that you work into your day. Could be listening to music, watching a funny movie to lift your spirits, um, relaxing in the sun, getting out for a short walk, finding out if you don't have hobbies, finding out what it is you're interested in and, and partaking in hobbies. It could be just taking a bubble bath, maybe turning off your phone or making a mental note to drink enough water during the day. It could be little things like that that we implement to take care of ourselves. Those are some great tips and there are a lot in there that I need to practice that are so easy to do. You know, like you said, staying hydrated. That's so simple to do. We've got water around us all the time, but we just don't think we get to do busy. It. Exactly. And don't take the time. So um, let's talk a little bit about life balance. So we all have demands and limitations on our time and our resources. Um, and all those factors change from time to time, you know. If you're in school, you graduate, and you start to have family and kids and mm -hmm. other people that need you. So when you're thinking about life balance, what should be considered to maintain or to create that balance? I would say um, that self-care really is just going to look different for everyone, and it'll be different for you on different days, depending on how much time you have in your day. Um, the most important thing, I think, would be to ask yourself, what am I needing at this moment? You know, if you're feeling stressed or overwhelmed, what area is it that I'm, that I'm lacking or I'm feeling like I need uh, a need to be met and um, finding a self-care action that works for you during that time, I think could be helpful. So taking the walk versus maybe going grabbing chocolate when, <laughs> when I'm feeling a little stressed. Exactly. <laughs> so self-care, um, very simply, it meets a need, but it can't be destructive in the long run. So one of the things that's important is like, if you're meeting a need with, uh, say, having a glass of alcohol or having, you know, a chocolate bar, sure, it works in the in the short term, it, it is soothing, it can be comforting, but in the long run, it can be self-destructive. So that doesn't really count as self-care. Good thing to remember. So um, the self-care wheel. Now, this is something I've seen. I'm sure people out there maybe have heard about it. But for those who have not seen it or heard about it, can you briefly describe what makes up the wheel? Yeah, so the self-care wheel, it kind of looks a bit like a wagon wheel, if you will. Okay. At the very center are the words uh, life balance. And that would be just the very hub, the very center of the wheel where it would attach to the wagon. And then coming off of the center, there is 
a spoke and on each spoke are the different areas of self-care. So physical, psychological, emotional, spiritual, personal, and professional. And it's gonna be important that we address each area uh, of self-care to maintain a balance in our lives. Just like a, a wagon wheel, if one of the areas are neglected or if a spoke is missing, that wheel is not gonna turn effectively. And, um, you know, the same thing with our life, uh, making sure that we address each of these areas will help us maintain a balance in our life. Okay. So who is this wheel intended to help? This wheel could be used for everyone and anyone, I feel. Um, it's a good starting point. It provides ideas for things that we might want to add to our own self-care plan. It shows us if we haven't developed one, what, what that might look like um, so that we can develop a, a self-care plan. We could use it, I guess you could say like a blueprint, um, taking some of the ideas that we like and leaving behind others that we feel like now that wouldn't really work for me. So I think that's great that it's very interactive. You know, it doesn't have to be the same thing for everybody. It's you know, you find what works for you in the time that you have, or as my mom would say, the season of your life, you know, if you've got kids, you might not have time to take a bubble bath because they're going to interrupt you anyways. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so it seems like self-care, like that's different and there's different activities, um, but it's definitely things that are different than eating and shopping and keeping the house clean. So why is it important, though, to have self-care in multiple areas? You, know, you talked about the spiritual and emotional. Right. Well, human beings are dynamic. Our lives are always changing. Our needs are always changing. And addressing each area of self-care helps us to maintain that life balance. And um, I did talk earlier about, you know, the importance of asking yourself, what am I needing at this moment? And make sure you're addressing the needs in each one of these areas, because as a whole person, you want to, you want to address um, all of the needs as a, as a whole being. So what would you say to people out there who think self-care is out of their reach simply because they identify it as a person with a disability? Yeah. So everyone can practice self-care and make a plan that works for them. Um, simple, small things might be worked into your day, like eating a healthy meal, drinking water, or stretching. Um, and it should be developed around your own capabilities and what works best for you. For instance, I have arthritis. So when I go to the gym, sometimes I'm in pain and I can't get on the exercise equipment. I might go in the pool or I might go for a walk. Someone who is in a wheelchair or even like in a hospital bed might just want to work in some stretching, deep breathing. You know, there, there are many different ways that we can address our self-care and our needs um, based on our own abilities. So you touched on a few things, but are there some low cost or no cost self-care tips that you find really helpful? Um, yeah, I feel like there are some things we could do every day that are completely free, like just taking a few minutes of quiet for yourself. Deep breathing is huge. This is something I do on a regular basis. Um, it just kind of resets your mind, relaxes your whole body. It releases those endorphins and gives you oxygen and um, that's something I like to do. Something simple like turning off your phone so you can't be reached, just creating some time and space for yourself um, so that you're not always available for people to call, um, things like that. Yeah, turning off the phone, that is such a great one. Um, I end up doing it and I don't plan it, which I think is even better. Um, I know like Monday night, I accidentally left my phone at home. So okay. I went running errands and <laughs> it was the best two hours of my life. That's awesome. Until I had that moment of like, did I lose my cell phone or did I leave it okay. at home? And I was like, oh wait, I left it. We're fine. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't do, you know, on my desk at work, I have a sticky note that reminds me to get up and go for a walk and to just listen for five things that I hear and to just feel five things. Cause I get so worked up in my anxiety sometimes mm -hmm. and you know, the deadlines and all this work stress or personal stress. Cause you can't just leave that at the door where you come in, you know? And I agree. So definitely things you can do out there. Um, I am guilty of this. Um, at times I'm the type that says, I don't have time for self-care because I need to do X, Y, Z for, for this family member or 
Um, I used to, I'm getting better at it. I used to say, I get all my self-care from helping other people. Mm -hmm. um, so what would you say to somebody like me? Or what would you want them to know? I can completely <laughs> relate to what you're saying because I'm the same way. But I would say that because you care for others, it's even more important for you to take care of yourself. People who are parents, um, those who care for others in their life, whether it's a parent or whether you're doing it for a profession, we are susceptible, excuse me, to compassion fatigue and burnout. Um, that can happen really easily. And when we only give, we can only give so much is what I want to say without filling up our own cup until we run out. And eventually, you know, we might continue managing and continue to function as exhausted as we are, but um, we really can't give our best to selves when we're crying best of ourselves to others if we're chronically stressed and fatigued. I feel like we need to make ourselves a priority so that we can be the most effective parent, the most effective friend and, and helper. Yeah. You know, I think you touched on something really important. We saw that at the beginning of the pandemic, a lot of that talk about compassion fatigue and just fatigue in general for people that are serving other people that, you know, they were just burned out from the constantly being on the clock taking care of everybody, not having yeah. time for themselves. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So anyone who's turned on the news has seen the headlines or they've heard the stories um, about what's called the potential triple demic. Uh, cases of flu, RSV, and COVID are increasing as we get into winter. Um, in fact, just the other day, I was reading that um, reported cases and hospitalization from flu are at a 10-year high for this time of year. So can self-care help combat the spread of these viruses this winter? Absolutely. Um, part of our self-care plan can be making sure we get regular visits to the doctor. Um, also, our immune system suffers when our stress levels rise. And things like getting enough sleep, staying hydrated, um, eating well, and reducing stress, whether through meditation, deep breathing, all those things help to boost our immune system and protect us from getting sick. Oh, that's great to know. Definitely need to schedule my doctor appointments, get that wellness checkup, make sure I'm on the path, being healthy. So what are the resources that you would recommend to our audience and why? Um, I have two worksheets uh, here. If you want to post these up for people, one is the self-care wheel and it talks about the different areas of self-care. And then underneath each, it gives you ideas of what you could do to address that area of self-care. And there's also a, ter a worksheet called self-care tips that can be helpful as well. The self-care wheel also comes with a blank one. If you wanna fill that in to develop your own self-care plan, it can be used for that. And then also on YouTube, I found a really great deep breathing. It's a guided deep breathing exercise that you can listen to. And then um, I'll give you the link for that as well. If people want to do that on their spare time. Yeah, that'd be perfect. So we'll definitely make sure we include that in the uh, description. So what's one question you wish I would have asked and how would you have answered it? I think you did an excellent job. <laughs> I can't really think <laughs> of any questions that you haven't addressed at this time. All right. So what are three things we can all do right now today to make positive movement in our own self-care plans? So the first I would say would be to take an honest look at what areas of self-care that you might need to work on in your life. The second would be to make a plan for self-care. It's good to have it written down this way. You know, you can look at it. You can bring it up and, and say, oh, you know, what might work for this or that? Or, and the third would be to just take small steps each day to meet those self-care needs. Remember to use the plan. Using the plan. It's always great to make the plan, but if you don't use it, I guess it's not very helpful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of like having a carbon up and gas in it. It's not going to do you much good. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so uh, I just want to say thank you again. Um, and I, I want to share this. So I recently read this quote, and I think it really sums up our conversation. Um, this is from Anne Lehman says, almost everything will work again if you unplug it for a few minutes, including you. Um, and I said, you know, we just need to make time every day to eat, to sleep, or to check our email. But we also need to start by taking just a minute to unplug and kind of invest in our greatest 
investment that we have in, in ourselves, I think. You know, would you agree? I absolutely agree. Yeah. Well, I want to thank Stephanie for taking time to talk with us today about self-care and thank you for tuning in and listening to our first podcast. Um, if you want to access any of those resources, that self-care wheel, uh, the self-care tips that we talked about, um, we'll put those in the link or you can also reach out to us here at LVCIL. Uh, we invite you to join us on Friday mornings for our independent living skills session on Zoom. Um, have a great weekend, everybody. Thanks.